all. Welcome, welcome to Crate and Craft this Sunday morning. I do hope you're well. I'm Lottie. And, of course, this hour, we're going to be in the quilting classroom with the one, the only, the fabulous, the one in a million, Jenny Raymond. And, of course, we have got lots of fantastic demonstrations planned because, Jenny, you're the queen of demonstrating. Oh, How are you? I am well, thank you. Well, and as ever, terrified, you see. Well, you don't look it. You look oh, as God, calm as a cucumber. Do, <laughs> do you know what? It's going to be a fantastic show because, of course, this is the third in the instalment. And they're waiting out there. There. They're in their pajamas Ready to or their go. nighties and they're sitting there. I know William is sitting in his high chair eating Ready his porridge to go. at this so moment. When are you going to get yes. started? Yes. Um, it's going to be fantastic because this is the third instalment. We're, you're going to be back on the 3rd of Feb for the yes, next quilting for the next classroom. and last one in this series. So we'll be finishing off the quilt because we're working on a sampler quilt. Okay. Basically it's 12 different blocks. Right. So we've done uh, four, quite a lot of them. Mm. Ten by the end of this show. We've got two more to go, which we'll do on the 3rd of Feb, and we'll talk about putting it together. And then, some mm. people might be making a quilt, but I think quite a lot of you are actually just doing the projects. Um, or just making blocks. And you please send in pictures. We, we do want, want pictures. Um, we do. So studio at creatingcraft.tv, uh, do send them in, because we are going to be giving away one of your fabulous yes. books. Yes. Yep. So you could be the lucky recipient of this if your email gets selected from the old cup of chance. With a picture. With a picture, though. Right. We do want pictures, pictures, please. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we need to get down the counter and show everyone what's yes. coming up. Yes, and then, of course, you can get started. 100%. Now, we've got some fabric for you. Now, this is your first item on the show today. And this is 259090. Now, this is the complete fabric bundle. And it is £59.99. So your club price, 53 with your 10% off. Two flexi pays of £27. So, of course, you can spread the cost interest free over the monthly payments and it does mean as well that anything else on the show you can add to the flexi basket and then that's divisible by the monthly payments as well um, so this bundle will enable us to make the whole quilt that is makes that the right? entire quilt yes so if you have that you can do the entire quilt and we've got two colorways we've got the autumnal one there yes that one and we've got another one the blue and yellow and sort of the spring one so that's your tongue lovely fabrics to work with mm. and of course they coordinate and there's enough there to bind it sash it do all the blocks and there'll be a bit left over not a lot but there will be a bit left over so this is everything you yes. need fabric yes. wise okay so this is like the autumnal version as Jenny was saying it's 259090 and then of course we've got this for you as well so if you like your blues um, this is going to be the option you'll go for 259107 5399 with your 10% off two flexi is again of £27. Lovely quality to this. They as soon as I really picked it up, I nice could feel that. Fabrics. Yes, they're nice, reasonable fabric to work with. They've got enough dressing in them to make them good body. When you wash them, they don't go all sort of soft and floppy. Mm. They are nice material. British. Mm. It's a British company. Macau. Excellent. Lovely. Mm. So quality's there through and through. So that's 259107. Now we also have the fat quarter type bundles yes. for you. So if you want to go for these, it's 259096, £13.49. What's this all about, Jenny? Right, these the will make either the three blocks we're doing on today's show mm. or they'll make the project because with every quilting classroom, wait for it, I've done not only the three blocks but I've written a project. Whee! You see, and they can download the project and they can make it. So the fabric, the five fat quarters or the five quarter style pack mm. will make the project or it will make the blocks. Wow, and I'm just loving that bag. It's so funky. Again, this is the uh, autumnal version, if you like. So it's 259096 at 1349. And then, of course, we've got the blue colour palette for you here as well. So it's £14.99 at 1349 with your discount. That's 259097, your item number. Now, we've actually got some templates for mm -hmm. you. Firstly, we've got the Dresden template. Yes. Now, so? this is a Dresden plate template, but I'm going to really confuse you. I'm going to Go use on. it to make a grandmother's fan. Ooh, mm -hmm. sounds exotic. The Dresden plate template can be used to make a 20-section Dresden plate. Right. I'm going to use it to make a quarter-section Dresden plate, which actually comes out as a fan. So although it's technically called the Dresden template, you can make a fan from it. Okay. Now you're really confused, aren't you? <laughs> it will all become crystal clear. It always does with you. 207592, that's going to get you your Dresden acrylic template, £10.79. Uh, then we've also got the 30 degree template. Now I'm using that to make the Dresden plate with. Okay. Because that will do, if you put 12 sections of that together, you will get a duodecahedron, believe it or not, or a 12-sided shape. Mm. But I'm actually using that in the same way that you would use the Dresden plate for, mm. um, by itself, to make a 12-section 12, uh, 12 Dresden plate. Okie dokie. Thank you. 247193, £10.79. Then we've also got the Trirex for you, which is this little lot here. So this is where we get two. 
Or is that one no, that it's, it's used one for template. Position? This does one part of it. Mm. It's a star it makes, or a star-like shape. That does one half of it. That does the main section. And they are extraordinarily good. When I first started, you used to have to draw these things up on graph paper, mm. with, put it onto cardboard, add your seam allowance, carefully cut it out. Nightmare. This takes all the steam out of it. I would not be without those templates. Okay. Well, that is a strong recommendation if ever I heard one. 247-197, the item number there. £16.19, the club price. Remember, if you're going for a nice warm flexi paint, you can pop that in your flexi basket. Now, we've also got the no-melt uh, plastic. <laughs> no-melt template plastic. <laughs> this is 20654 16 Why would we go for this? Right, this is very good for because there are times when you actually have to make your own templates. And because this is clear and see-through, I mean, you can't, it doesn't work on the television because it's totally clear. Yes. But you can trace off designs, you can make your own templates, because not every, and there are thousands and thousands of patchwork blocks, mm. literally thousands. I have a book with 5,000 of them in. Oh, wow. And there aren't enough acrylic templates in the world to cover it all. So you often need to make your own template. So you can trace off onto that, mm. cut it out. It will take the iron so you can iron things over it. Oh, and I use it for the centres of Dresden plates, the corners of the fan, something like the Mariner's Compass. I will trace around my circle, use that ace. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, that makes perfect sense now. 206-543, the item number. Uh, you are going to get six sheets, sizing of them on your screens there. It's 16.99, so it's 8.5 by 11 inches. Okay, now we've also got a fantastic sewing machine for you. We've got this at a brilliant price with FlexiPay. Um, this is 258208. It's normally 300 and... Uh, £29. Pounds. Look at this, club price today, £269.10. pounds and ten pence. Uh, We've got FlexiPay here as well, £89.70 will be your first payment plus the P&P. And of course you've got three payments there. So why do you go nuts about this machine? Because Jane? it has everything you need for a patchwork person. It comes with a whole series of feet, but it also comes with the walking foot. That's a walking foot. Thus. Yes. Mm. And the reason why it's so good is that the walking foot has its own set of feed dogs. Now, if you're not a sewer, this probably won't mean an awful lot to you. But basically, this massages the fabric through. And when you come to put your quilt together, you lot out there, you will need one of those if you're going to use the walking foot to quilt it with. Now, some people don't like to use walking foot. They like to use the free motion foot, and it comes with one of those as well. Oh, okay. So in this little box under here mm. there is an amazing machine which I shall demonstrate shortly <laughs> really is a cracking little machine and you know what we've got it at a sale price with three interest-free flexible payments of 89.70 plus the P&P that is a brilliant brilliant offer there 258208 the item number to quote when you call when you order online Okay, we've also got the rotary cutter. Now, this can be used by left-handed people, right-handed people. Um, it's designed in such a way that it takes a little bit of the stress and strainer it does. out it's of the wrist. It's ergonomic, our Lottie. Ergonomic. Uh, which for a Sunday morning, no, about glad 10 past eight, a long word. <laughs> glad you mentioned that. Uh, 206603. So it is very um, cleverly designed in that it's going to be comfortable to yes. use. So if you're going to yes. be using it for yes. any long it's period of time. Hand, and it's also got a guide down it so it fits on the edge of the ruler that we've also got on the show. Excellent, eh? £22.49. We do have the ruler for you up next. So, of course, it is designed to work with that an absolute treat. This is a bit of a whopper. I know. It's a measuring long strips with. OK. It will cut strips. It's a 24 and a half by 6 and a half inch ruler. Mm. And it will cut strips in quarter inch increments up to really any size you like because you can use it in conjunction with a cutting mat. But by itself, it's a ruler that anybody in the quilting world who's beginning sewing wants one of those. You need it. It's the first thing the students say, what do I get? Get one of those. It's one of your essentials. Yes. One of your yes. must-haves. Yep. So it's 203628, £19.79 the club price. Again, you can pop it in the old flexi basket if you're going for that uh, sewing machine on FlexiPay. Now with your fabric, of course. With your fabric, of course. Uh, now, we've also got the mini iron. Now, this tickled me. I just think <laughs> this is such a natty little device. It is fantastic. If you want to iron any little nook and cranny, it's great there? for patchworkers. Mm. It's great for people doing dolls' house furniture. It's great for dressmakers. It's great for anyone doing any miniature work. Anybody mm. who's got sort of any gophering just wants to get into going to class. You don't want to take a great big iron, mm. and very often the power won't take all those irons on mm. the same system. So mm. one of those it comes with a neat little stand, yes. and little if stand. you wanted to, you can always change the head and put other heads on. 
Ah, cool. So there are opportunities if you want to, to change it for other different sizes of irons at the end. Mm. Brilliant. No, it's a really good, neat tool. Clover product. All clover products are good. Fantastic. And of course, if you're into making um, furniture for dolls' houses, the little bedding and stuff yes. like that, oh, and it would that, you can get it all Because mm. with a big iron, you iron something like that and it would vanish or stick to the bottom of the iron. Yeah, and you could burn yourself very easily mm. out, of, out of thought. Uh, 192527, your item number there. And that's £35.99, but we do have that on Flexi Pay, so it'll be £18 today plus the PMP. Now we've got a diamond template for you here. Now, is this to do with next yes. month's quilting yes. class rule? That is going to do a design called tumbling blocks. Okay. All right. Or baby blocks. Oh. They are sort of diamonds together. And that's a really, again, another useful tool. Multi sizes, it does any size up to, I think it's four and a half inches, and really easy to use. Again, I used to have to draw them out of cardboard. Mm. Nightmare. So those days are gone. Yes, those days are gone. So that's for doing your tumbling blocks for block 13. Yeah. And then the other one we've got will be for doing block 12, which is your 45 degree diamond. Okay, so if you do want to go for this one, it's 247312, £12.59 when you're in our club. But then, of course, we've got the next one standing by. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the one that you just mentioned. Oh, and you take the paper off the back, Lottie. Take it off the back. Because somebody the other day had one in class and she said, oh, I can't see anything through this. Oh, no. I said, well, why do you take the paper <laughs> off the back? And then it'll all become crystal all clear. Okay. And the nice thing, of course, is they're coloured and you can see them. Yes. Although sometimes they do come in clear plastic, but they're equally as useful. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jenny. 167277, your item number there. That's the 45 degree diamond shaped acrylic template, and that's £12.59. Now, we've actually got a bundle of two templates for you up next, and again, these will be used, I will be using on, the those, yes. those are, think, on the 3rd of Feb. And those are, I think, two very, very useful templates. They do quarter square and half squares, which probably won't mean anything to you, not as yet being a patchwork. I'm determined to get you into the fold, so to speak. <laughs> so that one does your half squares yes and that one does your quarter squares they behave in two very different ways both marked out in quarter of an inch i find them invaluable for countless numbers of traditional and modern patchwork blocks okay thank you two six four seven three two is your item number there 22 pounds and 99 the crate and craft price now of course we do want your emails today send in those pictures remember it's studio at crate and .tv. one of you will be randomly selected at the end of the show to win jenny's fantastic book and we just like to hear from you so come on through to a studio at crate and craft .tv. Yeah, make comments ask questions you yes know, if we can't answer the questions this time i'll do it on the third of january yeah. uh, third of february third of february yes We're going back don't keep them waiting a year <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to let you get ready for okay, your first okay, demonstration. You. Um, please remember, everything you need to know is all online at all the w's.crotencraft.tv. And we've actually got a special area where you can um, see all the quilting classrooms, get all the information that you need. So it's Craft TV forward slash quilting so everything you need to know is online again if you do have any questions and you want to get those emails through to us it's studio at creatincraft.tv and of course if you want to call us you're more than welcome to do that it's 09056 480 480 and remember now you can also tap the app but for now i'm going to leave you in the fantastic hands of our jenny here she is hello right we are going to do three blocks today we're going to be starting off with the 5440 fight now you might wonder about its name a slightly strange name, but it's all to do with America, Alaska, fighting, etc. Et Look it up, Google it. I meant to do it this morning, so I was all clued up and I forgot. But you can do it. 5440, fight. Now, the block itself requires the what's known as the Trirex tool. And that is the tool that we showed you a moment or two. It comes in two parts. The major section here does the large part of the triangle in the middle, and the smaller section does the little bit at the side. And the nice thing about these tools is they work in a variety of different sizes. I'm going to be using the tool in conjunction with a four and a half inch strip. So from your fabric, you'll need to cut a four and a half inch strip. I'm going to be working with red for these sections and indeed the creamy color for the other section. Now this looks equally good in both the autumnal colorway and as I'll show you in the blue and yellow one. When it comes to cutting a strip, I tend to fold my fabric into four, give it a good press. Taking the ruler, put the ruler on top and align the lines of the ruler with the fold of the fabric this side and the fold of the fabric the other side. Neaten off the end. You almost invariably find that most times you'll need to neaten off the end. Remember, you're starting with the cutter a little bit before because if you don't, it won't cut the first piece. Cut right up the edge of the ruler, giving it a good firm press and then 
dispose of the string, as it's called. Some people like to keep them because you could use them with your embellisher. In this case, I'm going to dispose of it by putting it in the time-honoured fashion on the floor. I have to pick these things up afterwards or the floor manager gets after me. Slip the fabric round. You're now going to cut a four and a half inch strip. Bringing the ruler in from the left. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm bringing the ruler in from the left, lining up the four and a half inch line with the edge of the fabric, finding your rotary cutter, guard off the cutter, start a bit before, push it up the edge, off the end, and there is my four and a half inch strip. Having cut the four and a half inch strip, I'm going to use this to make the smaller parts of the star, these sections. Now, when cutting, I like to cut with my fabric with the fabric's double because you need a mirror image. So it's much easier to do this section with the fabric folded in half. Move number one is trim off the selvage. So ruler on top, cut your selvage off. It's a good idea not to cut the selvage off until you're ready for it because at least you know where the selvage is. Having cut the selvage, I need to flip the fabric round, take the template. Now, this template has a very special part to it. And I know when I was out teaching in Italy with me barbecue skewer gone to it'll do. I had to demonstrate this particular template. And they looked at the corner of the template. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny weeny bit missing in the corner. That little bit is, as I said in my only Italian, molto importante. It's not a bit missing off the template. That is actually a very useful little part of the template. So we have cut a four and a half inch strip. Put your template onto the fabric lining up the edge of the template with that neatly cut edge fingers on there and this is where those little uh, silicone discs are jolly good for holding in place cut up the edge of the template when you've cut up before you take the template off just clip that corner off the molto importante bit it's only a fraction but it will make life very much easier so that's cutting the two parts for the center the two parts of the star that bit and that bit we need to cut the middle section, the cream section, that one there. So for that, you again will need another four and a half inch strip. I've already cut a piece. Once more, you could either cut these singly, and indeed it will save fabric, or you could cut them double. I'm just going to cut them singly. Take your template, the other half. Again, lay the template on so the top edge of the template is aligned with the top of the fabric. The four and a half inch line should line up with the bottom of the material. Hand firmly on the template, guard off the cutter, push the blade up the edge, remove the section, dispose of it in the time-honoured way, secure the floor. Now, having cut that side, the last thing you do in ever is to cut towards you. So the way I get round the next cut is simply to flip the fabric over, replace the template, pop it on there, flat point to the edge of the fabric, lined up with the four and a half inch line, up the edge of that. Now I only need one for each of the two red pieces. If I wish to cut more, I simply flip the fabric over, replace the template, cut, etc, etc. Okay, having got the center section of my particular block, it's going to go together something like this and it pays to lay it out. We're now going to stitch these sections together and I'm going to take you to the sewing machine. So moving to the sewing machine over here, Here is my block, and do lay it out because it's ever so easy to get it wrong. Make sure that you've got the two flat ends of the red sections aligned with the bottom end of the triangle, and the little flat end is here at the top, because if you don't get it the right way around, it's a very funny shape. I like to take the piece and put the left-hand side on top, sorry, the right-hand side on top, and this is where you'll see where the molto importante little bit comes into its own. If we get the barbecue skewer on the edge here, can you see where it's exactly lined up with the edge of the fabric? There we go. Fantastic. Well done, those guys upstairs. You're going to stitch down here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You at home will not have to stand up to do your sewing, okay? You can sit down. You won't have to stand at a funny angle either, I promise you. You could sit down at your table. You don't have to stand all squiffy and get your foot sort of wrapped around the table, the edge here of the bench. This particular little machine comes with a quarter of an inch foot, which makes it absolutely fantastic to use. It's a really nice, easy to transport machine. Comes with a carrying handle, nice little machine, easy to operate. Plenty of feet come with it.
And I think one of the neat little things is the device they've got here to clean it with. Got a little brush that end, and look, inside is the most valuable tool in the world, your stitch ripper. Not that you're going to need it, of course, are you? No, miss. Right, pop it back in its little pocket. Lining up the pieces, starting at the top there, I like to drop my needle down to begin with. Proceed to sew down in orderly fashion. That's it. Down we go, all the way down. And with this particular foot, to make sure you've got the quarter of an inch correct, you get this part of the foot aligned with the edge of the fabric. Not the outer section, the inner section. Needle in the middle, down to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, what I like to use is the good old scrap of fabric. And my scrap of fabric has completely vanished. There we are, we'll use a scrap of fabric. Excellent little way this way for using up bits of material. And it sort of carries your thread from one section to another. You say off that onto the small scrap, cutting the work away by cutting the thread behind the machine. Right, that is the first section on the block. Take the other section. Now, what I like to do with this is to finger press the block and open it out. And if you've got the clover mini iron to hand, this is an excellent chance for just lightly pressing the seam open and flat. Take the other section, put it on the other side, line it up. Remember the molto importante bit at the bottom here. It should align with the edge of the material. And you are going to sew down. Now, whether you sew from this end or the other end really doesn't matter. Set off, onto the scrap, off the scrap, down the edge of the material, making sure that all the layers of the fabric are nicely together. I often find something like a barbecue skewer is really useful for holding the pieces as I go through underneath the machine. And certainly when I'm standing sideways. And then when you get to the bottom, don't just rip it off the machine. Rescue your little scrap, cut it from the back, stick it on the front here, onto that. So this will save a fortune in thread. And there is your block. And I think the nice thing about this block is that when you make it, is it is accurate. You've got your seam allowance at the top here, and it works a treat. So how do we put the block together? Let's go back to the table. Putting the block together is not difficult at all. You will need to make four of those sections. So here we are, we have four of them. So you will cut eight of those and four of those. So put them together, four. To make the corners, you're going to need two inch, sorry, two and a half inch squares. You will need eight two and a half inch squares. And you'll cut four in the beige fabric and four in the green. And do remember, all this is also on the PDF you can download off the website. These four squares get stitched together to make a bigger block. One goes there and one goes there. And if I were going to sew them together, my method of sewing, oops, uh, we're going to be clever and do it in Latin, but I can't do it on a Sunday morning, is to sew two squares together, press the seam open and flat, two squares together, press the seams open and flat, and then join the pairs together to make a square that looks like that, pressing the centre seam also open and flat. It's not difficult, and your seams should be a quarter of an inch, folks, so sit there, please, and please make sure you're accurate, because this block, with luck, should fit that block. It should be the same size, exactly and no trimming bits off, just in case. When you've made four of these, you're going to lay it out, and you'll need one more piece, and that will be a square for the centre. If you're going to cut just one square, a very useful tool to cut the one square is to have the square ruler. Any of the square rulers will do. This is a particularly good one because it's got the groove round the edge. Find a nice straight corner of your fabric, and if you haven't got one, cut one. Put the ruler on the top there, Hand firmly on that, guard off your cutter, up the edge, off the top, and along, and there is a four and a half inch square. Now, we're going to put the design together like this. Square will go in the middle. I'm going to use that one because it's slightly less creased. One of these goes at the top, one of these goes at the bottom, one goes at one side, one goes at the other side, and then we've got these pieces. One goes there, one goes there, one goes there, and the other one, which is here, will go in this space. Let's get it round the right way, or else you'll all laugh and say, I've got it hopelessly wrong. Now, that's how the block can go. But you might say, oh, I don't like that. Could I do something else? Yes, of course you could. There's no reason why you couldn't turn these pieces round. 
You don't have to have these colours. You could be imaginative. The tool will work in any colour. You could change it round. You could change the corners round. Turn that to there. You see, you can do all sorts of very different blocks. You could change the middle. You could put something different in the centre. But if you are going to sew it together, the way that I would suggest you sew it together is, let's put it back how I had it, or else it'll confuse everybody, including me. Put it all back that way. There we go. And that's that. So it goes together. I don't like to do three rows. Some people do. I personally prefer to stitch it together in sections. So I will stitch that piece to that piece. Now, this is where you need to watch carefully your seam allowance. There is your seam allowance right here. There. That is where your stitching should go through, that junction. And that junction should be, is she getting quite serious now, a quarter of an inch from the edge of the material. So when you put these two bits together, where you're going to be sewing, if I turn it around this way, you can see, move the thread out of the way, you should be doing your stitching exactly through that point you can see in the seams, because that is the top of the point on this side of the fabric. Now, how I tend to sew it together is I'll sew that bit to that bit, Comme ça. There you are, a bit of French for the Sunday morning. And then I'll sew that bit to that bit. There we go. And then I'll sew this bit to this bit. Or rather that bit to that bit down there. There we go, on there. And then I'll sew a row of three. One, two, three. And having done the pieces together like that, so two together, two together, two together, I'll sew those two to that, that one on the end, and then put the row of three on the bottom pressing all the seams open and flat and with luck when you finished it could look it could look either like this one which i've done in the autumn colorway or it could like look like this one which i've done in the blue and yellow colorway and because you use those templates you will have an accurate seam allowance around the outside of the block allowing you to stitch this into the next block will add the sashing for when we do the quilt. So there you are, 54.40 or fight. Well, oh, hey, I never. Yes, well, there you are, you see, you know how to do that one yes, now. Yes, I do. Um, we've actually had some emails come through, which is fantastic. Golly, so gosh. thank you for getting in touch. Shall I have a quick read? Yes, have a quick read. Now, this is, hi, Jenny. I've made the Amish Friendship Star and the Flying Geese, but I'm having problems lining up the points on the Pieced Star. Is there a technique slash easy way of doing this? Uh, please see the pictures of the blocks I've made from Karen and Paisley. Uh, I think probably the best thing to do is uh, check your seam allowance. Mm. Make sure you've run off the PDF that was on there of that particular block. If you haven't got it to hand, then email me and I'll send it to you. Email is on my website, Jen Raymond. <gasps> Let's have a look. Well, that look. looks pretty good, actually. I can't see. I can't really see anything wrong with that at all. I think they look perfect. And she's got her quarter of an inches all round here, which is yeah. fantastic. Um, I don't see there's anything major with that. You've got a quarter of an inch there, quarter of an What are you worried about, woman? It looks oh, fantastic. fantastic. Well done. Shall we compare with what we have on no, the No, I shouldn't if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. B saying, go fine. on. I think that's fine. I, I honestly can't see anything wrong with it. So have which quilt are we looking at? Where are these um, bits from this You'll find one here? that block. The one at the top is on there. Yeah. Okay. And the Amish Friendship Star you'll find on that quilt. I can never... It's yes, over there. The two blocks are here. Shall we have a quick finger-pointing moment right. for yep. the crew? Okay. Ah, right. Okay. See? So there we go. And the reason why there's funny little black dots on here is this quilt's actually been finished. And these little black dots are the micro tag gun that we have on the shows. You can find it on the website yeah. uh, where I've used it to tag the quilt together before I free motion machine quilted it. Right. I didn't use the walking foot because I'm idle and I like to have life easy. It means I haven't <laughs> you got are not to idle. <laughs> <laughs> can be very idle. So that block is the one and you need those points you see because mm. when you add the bits around here your points should be accurate because patchworkers Lottie are picky ah okay patchworkers are picky I like the nice yes, bit of alliteration how. thank you for that Karen well done you they look great extremely good it's not worrying yeah give yourselves a peel on the beak pat the back now this says hi I thought I would send you a picture of a memory quilt that I made for my grandson this Christmas I also put together a photo album with a photo of each person that is on the quilt you inspired me to make this quilt and the idea of putting family names on was why I called it a memory quilt my grandson son absolutely loves it excellent and he, yeah and he said he will never forget a birthday ever again because along with the names on the quilt i've included each
each person's birthday. Well, I wish I would do that because the number of times Brilliant. I get, you know, you haven't remembered my birthday yet again. <laughs> I know, isn't that a great idea? I'm very proud of it and drawing designs for my next cook for next Christmas. I'm watching your show now to get more tips and tricks and I'm still learning. Many regards from Margaret. Oh, look, you can tell that's just stunning. Oh, ace. Oh, that is excellent. Really, really, look at really good. Look the work that's gone into oh, that. It's got Dennis and Mills. No, I thought it was Dennis and Mills. There are flowers on there. Aren't they lovely? Beautiful. I love all the colours yes, as well. Yes, very nice. And people's birthday. Well done, you. Top Excellent. Top job, yes. Margaret. Yep. Love nice. your work. Thank you very much. And then we've had another email come through from... Let me just refresh my memory if I can get the right page up. Liz. Hello, Liz. She says, hi, Lottie, Jenny, and all at CNC. I was so inspired by all the sewing shows to have a go at patchwork that I bought my first sewing machine last year and attached a picture of my first attempt. I've watched all of Jenny's quilting shows for the hints and tips and to find out all the things I was doing wrong. I've learnt so much. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to many more shows in 2013 from Liz in Whitney. Oh, oh well done, Liz. And she used... First attempt. Yes, I think that's jolly good. It looks as though she used the... Um, uh, easy angle on there and she's got squares cut out there brilliant well done you like the colors nice use of fabric notice how she's got the motif in the middle very, there. very very Ace. pretty well done you top Excellent. job thank you very much for sending that through so let's just put you all in the cup of charms yep. remember we are giving away one of jenny's books this hour um so we would love to hear from you and if you can do send us through your pickies of first attempts because yes, I, I keep them yes you do don't you mm, you do exactly. indeed yes okay let me just put this in the old car. That's right. And I'm having the pictures, so let's have You'll them. grab the Thank pickies. You. I'll, I'll take back the clipboard. I'll put them safely down there and pick it's them up good. when I pick the rubbish up. Lovely. Right. So, there we've got you on the cup of chance. If you want to send us a line, it is studio at creatingcraft.tv. And remember, everything you need to know is on the website, so it's creatingcraft.tv. Um, and we've actually got a lovely Jenny's smiley face there. We've actually got the little <laughs> segment all ready to go for you. So, it's Creighton Craft. Is it Creighton Craft TV? Forward slash quilting, I do believe. No, you, you just put quilting classroom into the search engine. Much the easiest. Oh, well, there you just go. Go onto the website, in the search box, write quilting classroom, little letters, big letters, doesn't really matter. He even finds it if you can't spell it proper. I'm loving it. So it's easy to find. Everything you need to know online, search quilting.tv. But for now, more from the fantastic Jenny. Off you go. Right. Now we're going to do the Dresden plate. Now, Dresden plate is how often has a series of different pieces or indeed edging. I've got the pointy edged here, but in the PDF that you can get if you download it off the website, I have actually given you the template to make the rounded edged Dresden plate. And there's no real reason why you couldn't actually, if you really wanted to be um, adventurous, is use some rounded bits and some pointed bits, they will all fit. But doing the pointed bits ones, this is where I'm going to use, it does seem a little strange, I'm using the 30 degree template because I'm going to take 12 sections. I could use the Dresden plate template, but that takes 20 sections. And I felt for the quilt that we're making that a 12 section plate might be a little easier for those who are perhaps starting patchwork. And also it meant far less sewing for me because you've got to make all these stage samples. Now, I'm working with, again, a four and a half inch strip. And once more, I'm also working with this template, but not all of the template, only part of it. So, to cut the pieces for the Dresden plate, you are going to need a four and a half inch strip in yellow, say, if you're doing a blue and yellow one, and a four and a half inch strip in the blue. Once more, I like to cut my fabric out with the fabric folded, simply because I'm idle. And um, believe you me, I really am. Taking my four and a half inch cut strip, putting the ruler on the top here, and this is where you want to be just a little bit careful because I'm having the ruler so the six inch line is aligned up with the fabric and the one and a half inch line is the other side. I'm not using it from the bottom. I'm using it from part way up, one and a half to six. So there we go, lay it on there and you can see one and a half to six up there. And whether you start off with it this way up or whether you start off with it that way up, it really doesn't matter any difference at all. So one and a half and six. Move the template to the edge of the fabric. We try not to waste any fabric. Let's get my fabric absolutely together because I know your beady eyes out there are busy watching me. Making notes of all her mistakes. Guard off your cutter. Slide the blade up the edge. And you'll never guess what we're not going to do. Quite right, we're not going to cut down the other side, are we? Oh no, we are going to turn the fabric. This is the royal we, meaning you. And you can either turn the fabric and turn the template and realign the template. There we go. So I'm cutting out 
sections and you will need six sections in yellow and six sections in the blue. Right, so there are two, you'll need to do this three more times. And if you're going to do it again, just simply flip the template round, realign it one and a half inches and six and cut. When you've cut six blue and six yellow, we're going to sew them in a certain way. It will pay you to actually fold the shape in half and give it a little press. And this is where the clover iron is remarkably good for pressing the fabric. Let's move those out of the way. And you could use that for pressing the little fabric on the edge there. And I'm just going to finger press it for the moment because I forgot to turn the iron on, which would be really rather daft of me. Having pressed it, we're going to sew across the end. So back to the sewing machine again. And I'm going to sew from the machine down here off my little bit down the edge there. Down the first one, pick up the next one, stick it under. And you will go all the way down all 12. So simply pick them up, stuff them under, remembering at the end to cut a little bit off the end and tuck it under the bottom there. Right, when you've made 12, and it's not terribly arduous, we are going to clip the point off the end of each of the shapes. Now, when I say clip the point off the end, I mean off the seam only. Please don't do as somebody did the other day, which was hack the entire thing. So just cut that bit off. It's only to reduce bulk in the seam. When you've done that, flatten the shape, press the shape like that. There you go, and that's where the iron would be so useful if I'd remember to turn it on. Once you've pressed that open and flat, we're going to turn it right side out. And this is where the bamboo skewer, or pointer, is remarkably good for just poking the end out. Uh, incidentally, if ever you go to the States, don't refer to the word poke. They don't like it. All right, It's sort of pushing the end up. Giving it a good poke is not a good thing to say in the States. Having done that, make sure that the centre there is lined up with the crease, and you will make 12 of these. Right. So here we have a couple. Here's ones I did earlier. When we come to join the block together, the easiest way to do it is to join the blocks together in sets of two. Now, the trick that I do when I sew it together is I will put one on top of t'other and then sew down the edge. I'm going to put the yellow one on top because you can probably see more clearly. When I come to do the stitching, rather than starting at the very edge and sewing right the way down, what I tend to do is start in a bit, go back to the edge and then down to the bottom. Now, the crucial part to get lined up is to get lined up these edges. Don't worry about the bottom because the bottom's going to get covered up, but line up these edges. Start in a bit, and you can see where I started there. Go back to the edge, down to the bottom. And a word of caution, when you do this, make your six sets of two, because you'll be doing this six times, with the same colour on the top and sew the same side. Otherwise, the pieces don't fit together at all. So when you've done that, we're going to lay them out and you will have 12 sections stitched together as sets of two. How you join them together is you join two sets of two to two sets of two, making a set of four. Repeat that twice more, so we end up with all 12 sections joined together in three lots of four. When you've done that, then you join the three lots of four together to make the whole. That's whole with a W, not whole with a H. And there is your entire plate. And it's at this stage, folks, when you can press the seams open and flat. Do not press it until you get to this stage. And the reason why is if you press it in between, you'll stretch the middle. Now, when you've done that, you're going to want a 12 and a half inch square. And that is where this ruler is so amazingly good because it measures exactly 12 and a half inches. And all you have to do is cut round the entire shape and you will get a 12 and a half inch square. And there it is. When I open it out, that is the backing square upon which I'm going to put the plate. Now, tip, because we need to get the plate bang in the middle, 
If you press it in half and in half again, north and south and also west and east, you can then get the plate bang in the very centre, line it up with the various points. Pin it on well, and having pinned it on well, you'll need to make the centre. And that's where the Mylar No Melt plastic is so very useful. What I tend to do with it is I cut a circle out of it. Now, another little tip here. Because the stuff is uh, transparent, you can't always see it. And what I have been doing is using one of those glue sticks, is drawing my circle onto paper, and I use the Simplicity Circle Cut template to do it, sticking the paper to the back of the template, or the front, it doesn't really matter, and cutting it out. And the use of that means I can actually see my template. Now, another little tip for you is when it comes to putting it onto the fabric, you have a choice of two ways of doing this. One way of doing this is to take your piece of um, mylar, no melt template plus plastic, get it all right, put it onto the fabric, pin it on, and then press the edges of the fabric over the edge of the template and baste it on on the sewing machine. Now that's one way of doing it. It's the pinning of the mylar template plastic, the fabric, I found difficult. So the trick that I use is a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. And if you use double-sided sticky tape, and remember to take off the bit of paper at the back there, it will stick it very neatly onto, you can't get it off, there we are, the fabric and hold it in place. Keep the bit of paper to put back on afterwards. Now, another way of doing the centre is to lay your template onto the fabric, stick it on with the bit of sticky tape, cut half an inch proud, using a hand sewing needle, just literally go right the way round the very edge, gathering the thread up and stitch all the way round it, and then you can pull it evenly and over the middle of the template. And here's one I did in green, just to show you don't have to have a blue centre if you don't want it. Once you've done that, this is going to be put in the centre of the Dresden plate, pinned in place, and then you applique it down. And you can do that by hand or on the machine. Now, before you panic and say, oh my goodness me, how on earth am I going to get the back out? Once you stitch it in the centre here, turn it over, take any basting out, tacking that is in this side of the world, and then cut through the layers to the Mylar template plastic. And then it will come out, I promise you, easy peasy, just like that. There you go, proof. All right, so you've now got your Dresden plate done, whether it's in blue and yellow, or whether it's in the autumnal shade. And if you want to do this one, the template is in the PDF that I've got. And the trick with that to get the wounded edge is to put the completed plate onto a piece of interfacing, lay it down right side of plate to back side of interfacing, stitch all the way round, trim the interfacing off back to the edge, and then all you would do then is turn the plate through. I just turn it through very rapidly there, you'll see the idea. And there is the edge of the plate all beautifully turned down for you. This can then be applied to the backing fabric, stick your middle in, and you've got the rounded version. And I dare you to try doing a pointy and a rounded. How's that for a challenge? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> da -da 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 -dum. <laughs> what a challenge. Um, I've come in with some more emails good, for you, my good. lovely. Um, this says, hi, Jenny, Lottie and the crew. I've been watching the shows and this year I intend to actually make something. Excellent. Fantastic. Yesterday I visited Emsworth and was further encouraged by Jenny's <laughs> windows, window displays. It is encouraging to be able to download the projects and they're so clear and detailed. Must go now. They so take me blooming ages to I write I bet as they well. do. I'm going to show you one now, actually. <laughs> I must go now so as not to miss any of the show. Best wishes to you all from Penny. Hello, Penny. Nice to hear from you. So this is today's... Yes, nine pages of it. Nine pages. <coughs> yes. So, of course, you can download all of this. Look, it is so detailed. I mean, Jenny put so much love and care and attention to detail well, into about these. love, but I put the care and attention into it. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Dresden there. You've got the Dresden plate template, everything covered there. So, basically, you can download this FOC free of charge. 
Loving that. So, Quilting Classroom 3, and of course, everything you need to know is in that. Now, I've had more emails come through. Remember, we are giving away one of Jenny's books this hour, so uh, come through just if you've yet to do so. This says, he hello to the lovely Jenny, Lottie, Sunday Crow and all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love these shows. I'm sitting in my gym jams with a cup of coffee. Oh, how lovely. Uh, Jenny, thank you for <laughs> well, your... At least she's wearing something. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for your inspiration. I've recently purchased a new sewing machine off C&C yes. after years. I'm not sewing. Fantastic. My first project was I made a kitty play tunnel for my two cats, Jack and Louie. How lovely. Did you say the smaller packs of fabric would make that beautiful cat bag? Yes. And where do you download yes. it from? Um, I, it's no longer on Hello your Jet. website, but I'll make sure it goes onto my website. It'll be on my website, jennyraymond.com, on the Create and Craft page. I'll put it on there tomorrow. I think it might be on there, but I'll make sure it is. Okay? So there you go, Jet. Right. Thank you for your email. And this says, Hi, Jenny and Lottie, Magic Hands and Fab crew. I'm completely new to quilting, and I soak up your demos like a sponge, Jenny. Lovely. I like the thought of it. <laughs> uh, thank you for encouraging me to take up this brilliant hobby. I have made a practice quilt for my cat's bed. I've not attempted using templates yet. I bought some, but we'll use them when I'm more confident. Sending a pic of the quilt made uh, with strips of fabric, and if I can do it, anyone can. Best oh, wishes well from done, Sheila. Huh? That's jolly oh, good. That's, no, that's oh, gorgeous. What are you waiting for on your cat's bed? Oh, mind you, you see, you know, I would have put that on the real bed. Oh, that is excellent. That's Brilliant. fabulous. Splendid. Good work, you. Thank you ever so much for sending that through to us. And um, we do have a really magic hand standing by with the old cup of chance. That's so right. Put all all in. In the cup of and then, of course, we can uh, crack on yes. with your next demonstration. Right, the grandmother's fan, madam. Oh, so the best oh, till last. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you, Magic Hands. Remember, if you do want to come through to us, you've still got time. It's studio at creatingcraft.tv. And we are giving away a book this hour, so it would be nice to hear from you. And you might win something, you never yeah, know. Absolutely. Someone's got to win it, yes, because I'm not taking it. The car will go so much faster home, you see. Yes, you yes. see. But you must drive yeah. sensibly. I do. And I within do. your speed limits. I always do. Because, good girl, yes, good girl. Yes, the, 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 you know, those those points and money no we don't okay that. right and now of course everything you need, need to know and everything on the show is online so it's all the w's.crankcraft.tv uh, so you can order online if something's on flexi pay you can request that online as well if you do want to call us though you can do that 09056 480 480 but let's now have a third and final demonstration from jenny Right, and we're now going to do the grandmother's fan and here we have a grandmother's fan done in blue and yellow and here we have the grandmother's fan done in the autumnal ones. Now, the heart template I've used on the corner, you could use the Simplicity heart template, which you'll find on the website, or, of course, you could always use the slice fabric. So those of you who are lucky enough to get a slice fabric for Christmas could put any sort of motif you like there in the corner. How do we make the block? Well, for doing this block, I'm going to use, and this will confuse you all totally, I just love confusing people, I'm using the Dresden plate block because I'm actually going to make a Dresden plate, but only a quarter of it. Now, this makes, if you put all the sections together, a 20-section Dresden plate. I'm going to use a quarter, so half sums you lot, count on your fingers and your toes, five. Right, so we've got five sections. How are we going to cut the fabric? Well, you're going to be using a seven and a half inch strip of material. And with the template, once more, I'm not going to use the entire template from top to bottom. I'm going to start at one, to the end of the template. Once more, if you take a bit of fabric, and I'll just chop the end off and level it off a little bit, and remember, take your strip, put the ruler on the top, guard off your cutter. These cutters are so good because they stay in the groove and they don't wobble off. So for all of you being a sort of beginner, this really does work. Having cut the end off, put my template on there, line up with one down the bottom, because we're not going to be using the entire template, the eight will be at the top. Same rule applies as with the Dresden plate. Cut up one side. Do not, do not, I have to say this so that nobody does cut the other way. You can either turn the fabric round or turn the template round, it doesn't matter. But remember to realign it with the one at the top. Let's have it the right way up. Oops, the cameras might get funny with the writing. There we go. And up the end there. Right, you will need to do two sections in yellow or two sections in one of the two colours, if you're using two colours, or you could be adventurous and try all five, and you'll need three sections doing in blue. Now, they work in very much the same way as did the Dresden plate. These sections get taken, folded in half and lightly pressed. You then stitch down the end. Let's find why here's one I did earlier. Let me take the pin out of that. You stitch down the end of the block using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And what are we going to do at the top here? I've just heard you. Yes, cut the end off. When you cut the end off, open it out, 
finger press that seam flat, use the clover mini iron to get it nice and flat. And once you've finger pressed it flat, my fingers are dry, let's get that there. Give it a good scratch. Turn it right side out. And remember that bamboo pointer is remarkably good for pushing up the orifice up there and giving it a gentle prod. You will need to make two in yellow and three in blue or whatever colours you're going to use, it doesn't really matter. How you stitch it together, again, is much the same as the Dresden plate. I deliberately chose two blocks that were similar so that you won't get in too much of a panic with the stitching if you're new. I would sew it together, two together, two together, and then stick one odd one on the end, and then stitch the row of three to those two, remembering at all times that when I do my stitching, to start with the trick I've shown you before, in a bit, sew to the edge, go back right down to the bottom. That's the bit you need to have held nice and level, not the bottom. When you've got all five together, you'll need to have another 12 and a half inch square. So take your 12 and a half inch square template, draw around it, just cut right around the entire thing. It is exactly the right size. When you've done that, pin the fan, and you can see I've got mine here, pinned very carefully into the corner. I like to have my pins going the direction I want the fabric to go, so they're all pushing the material out. Because if you have your pins going this way, it pushes the fabric automatically inwards. And I don't want that. I want it to sort of go out. Okay, in the corner here, we've got a hole. We've got a quarter of a circle hole. And I can use the Simplicity quarter circle to cut a quarter out. Put it onto the Mylar template plastic. So there is my quarter circle. And I'm using the four inch diameter circle. Again, that little bit of double-sided sticky tape. Hey, all you craft people out there, you must have lots. Really useful. Take the paper off it. Cut yourself out a bit of fabric. You want the fabric to be level with the L shape of the template, so pop it onto there. And round the arc, we want to add about half an inch. More is always better than less. I always feel that more should be better than less. You can either tack it on there by hand, baste it, or you can press it over there and do it on the machine. I have no problem with sewing through the plastic. And you can see on here, if I hold it very still, I've sewn round the edge. When you do the stitching, if you're going to do it by hand, you'll just pull the thread round. If you're going to do it on the machine, you're obviously going to go through all the layers. Do not stitch too close to the edge. Stitch in a bit, all right? Because otherwise that will get in the applique and you won't be able to take it out. I put another piece of the double-sided sticky tape in the bottom there to hold it in place, pop it onto your block in the corner, pin it on, and then you can stitch it on going all the way round. Now, whether you have a blue one or whether you have a green one, the choice is entirely and utterly up to you. And on this sample, I've got the green one on here in the corner. When you've put it onto the corner of the block here, you can either use the machine and that little Husqvarna does an excellent little blind hem stitch or applique stitch to sew it on with, or you can do it by hand. And you might say to yourself, hmm, what do I do with the template? Well, the template will simply come out through the space underneath here. When you take the template out, it will pay you to trim back all the edges nice and tidy. Now, that's basically how the fan gets put together. It's much the same as the Dresden plate. I felt that it was a bit vacant in that corner, you know, a bit like my head, vacant, empty, nothing in it. So you could put an applique. Now you can either do something like a heart applique, and that's where the Simplicity Heart template was really remarkably good, and you'll be able to find that on the website. Or, of course, go mad and use the slice fabric. I mean, what about a snowflake? What about using sort of parts of a tulip? What about a flower? What about a cross? What about all sorts of different things could be cut out on the slice fabric? And all you do with that is peel the paper off the back, bond it in place, and then simply sew round it. So whether you do the heart or whether you do the slice fabric, put something in the corner. Now, that's the three blocks. Coming up, we've got more blocks for next week, and they'll look a little bit like this. This is next week's, or not next week's, 3rd of February, next month. We're going to do tumbling blocks. So you'll need the tumbling block 60 degree. We're going to need the 45, and you've got a choice. You've got a choice between doing easy peasy, which is this one. That's easy peasy, and that uses the 45 degree diamond. 
or, or you could go a little bit bolder and do that. And you can do it in two colours, three colours, four colours or eight colours, it doesn't matter. Or you can take the easy route, this is a slightly cheating route, and I will demonstrate all the techniques on the 3rd of February. So you need to be there in your jammies and ready for the quilting classroom, number four. So that's, yes, going to be on your screens on the 3rd of Feb. Yes. yes. Can't wait. Yes, I've got even more work to do now to make all the stays sample. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so good at it, you have to keep doing it because it's just so good. Uh, we're going to get the uh, Cup of Chance in a mo so we can select someone to win the fantastic book. Uh, but let's just have a quick look at the yes. quilt at the back of the set because this is what we're working towards, of course. Right, so and this is what your gorgeous. fabric pack buys. If you buy that fabric pack, you get all of that. OK, yeah. so we can do all the blocks. We've done these blocks at the top here. Again, you could use a size fabric there. Yeah. I mean, that is a brilliant tool for just using applique. We have yet to do the tumbling blocks, which I'm hiding with my body down the bottom there, mm -hmm. and also the eight-pointed star, which is the one that is there. Yeah. But basically, we've built our way through a series of different patchwork techniques. We've done them fairly quickly, and mm -hmm. I think that people have been jolly good. The things they've sent in amazing. It's brilliant now, to see, isn't it? this quilt is, in fact, just about finished. Yeah. I've free motion machine quilted it. Mm -hmm. It's got a backing fabric on it, so it's already sort of backed and ready to go. Yes. What we'll be doing in the 3rd of February is to talking your way through the blocks and also how to bind, how to put the quilt together using the quilting bias binding machine for the outside edge and the micro tag tool for doing that, and that will make a really good job if you're doing a quilt. If not, you might be doing just a small project. Yes, but you have to tune in. Whatever you're doing, you have to tune in. Sunday the 3rd of Feb. February, 8, 8 a.m. Yes, dressed or undressed, it doesn't matter. Dressed to impress. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to select some from the old cup of chance. Thank you so much for all your emails today. Where's the book? Oh, you've got the book to hand I've got there. the book, so I'll yes. let you select some and I'll oh, go Oh, right. Now, I will read these, all right? I know we haven't had a chance to read Jenny them. Jenny always I'm does. I'll read them, and if there are any queries, I will come back to you about them. Right, I'm going to have... Have a rummage. Yes, I'm going to have this one. Right. Who is it? Who is it? It is. Oh, she's not sharing. <laughs> it's from Margaret. Oh, but Margaret, Margaret hasn't put her address on it. Ah, uh, now Margaret, I hope um, you've actually sent that in to everyone upstairs. Apparently, we are going to get it. But yeah, if you haven't sent in your details, can you send us another email? Yes. Because we do need yes. to get. P pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and can I just say thanks to Carol, to Sheila, to Liz, to everyone to everybody, that we didn't thank read you. out. We, we need the support. Keep doing it because you want to keep the quilting classroom on your screens, don't you? Yes. Yes, indeed. Jenny, thank you and so you much. Mm, it's always such a, a pleasure to see your smiling and lovely face. lovely to see you too. Now, of course, up next, we've got two hours of stamping. We're going to be stamping with Clarity, in fact, with the wonderful Barbara Gray and our lovely Nigel May, Excellent. your king of craft. So that's going to be the next two hours sorted this Sunday morning. And then, of course, I'm back with an art show with Tony Hogan at 11 o'clock today. Oh, so Ace, you'll he's join fantastic. Us for that. Yes, I've heard such amazing yes, things. Yes, really good. So please join us for that. But yes, coming up next, we've got Barbara Gray for a whole two hours. Another great lady. And don't forget, this great lady's back on Sunday the 3rd of February, the next classroom. We'll see you soon.